So communicating powerfully, uh, you will never know, you will never know how much more effective you're going to be if you learn this. Because when it comes to communication, did you know even silence is communication? And sometimes you should use it to communicate. Um, the way you look at someone is communication. Okay. The way you treat other people in public, you're communicating. If you can learn the art of communicating powerfully, then you will be, you will multiply your effectiveness. Now, but the problem is eh, some people confuse communication and talking. You know, when you're talking, you think you're communicating. Is there a difference anyway? Uh, let me uh, let me hear from uh, let me let me hear from David Odiambo. David uh, Odiambo. Yes. Uh, let me let me mute someone. Uh, David, good evening. Yes, good evening. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Is there a difference between uh, communication and talking? And if so, what's the difference? Yes, there's a difference between communicating and talking. I think the difference is when you're communicating, you, you're sending a message to a receiver and you're making sure that the message has been received, there's feedback, and you know, there's, something can happen from that. But talking, you're not sure if the message is being received, there's no feedback, and... Sometimes even the receiver is not listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's the difference. So would you say I am I am talking or I am communicating? Uh, that... David, I would, I would say you are communicating. Hopefully, <laughs> I, I would say. Hopefully, that's that's yes, what yes. I'm saying. Hopefully, I am I am communicating. Who who um. Who decide whether an in, an engagement is communication or it's talking? Because you see, I might be talking. Me, I'm putting all the effort, thinking I am communicating, but the person listening to me switches off. So, in as much as from my end, I am all set for communication. The other person who is listening does everything possible to make that interaction a talking one. And not necessarily a communication. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, David. I want to ask. Uh, I want to ask uh, Vincent. Uh, Vincent, uh, good evening. Vincent Opio. Uh, Vincent, are you with us today? I'm seeing Vincent. I think Vincent is looking for the unmute button. It's on the left uh, bottom corner. I'm not wrong. In the meantime, we can engage Roslyn Tenai. Roslyn, uh, good evening. You know, you, 
no anyway it, it comes to we, we have we have to communicate <laughs> good evening how are you yeah i'm fine i'm in a noisy place i'm in a car traveling no so way I'm in a communicate well <laughs> <laughs> you may not communicate so well eh? mm. but at least you're listening isn't it yeah i'm trying to listen ah all right all right i see i see that i see that um uh, david uh, fala david yes sir how are you doing today i'm doing great do you agree with the assertion that uh, there's a difference between communication and speaking and talking? That is? Yes, sir. There is a difference between communication and talking. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? When you are communicating to somebody, um, you are giving across a message, mm -hmm. and then the person is paying attention, mm -hmm. are looking directly. To the person you are talking to and the person is talking to you or you are talking to the person mm -hmm. the person is is doing the reception by nodding either nodding his head or mm -hmm. responding mm -hmm. yes yes and you keep your eye contact directly and, and respect listening skills you cannot be communicating and then you are on your computer and then you are talking to somebody it's like you're not paying attention or the person mm -hmm. is not paying attention to you. Mm -hmm. the message will not go across Great. Now, so when you are talking, yes. you can be talking, mm -hmm. and then you are not paying attention to the person. Mm -hmm. When you are giving a message, you are talking. But there is no direct attention to, mm -hmm. your, to your listener. Mm -hmm. Now, David, supposing, supposing I'm talking with you, uh -huh. and then you see me do like this. <sighs> Did I communicate? You are, communi you are communicating to me. That's a uh, there is verbal and non-verbal, uh, verbal and non-verbal communication. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, you are giving me a non-verbal action mm -hmm. of communication, telling me that you are tired. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, I didn't talk, isn't it? You didn't talk, <laughs> but your action can tell me that. <laughs> you... <laughs> so you can actually communicate without talking, isn't it? Oh yes. Can you talk without communicating? Yes, you can talk. That's non-verbal communication. No, 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 no. Can, can I talk? I am talking, but I'm mm. not communicating. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, you can talk without communication mm. when the person is not paying attention to you. And, and that's not communication. The message is not going across. The person is not getting you. Or even the person doesn't understand the, uh, the language, isn't it? I could be speaking French and maybe someone doesn't understand French. You know? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm talking and they're not... Uh, yes. uh, thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, Maureen. Uh, uh, good evening, Maureen. Uh, Koputo, Maureen. Yes, good evening. How are you doing today? I'm okay. How are you doing? Fine. Now, tell me, before, before, you, before you make your comment, uh, tell me, um, do you think animals communicate? Uh, yes, on my side, I have a thinking that there is a difference. When you're talking, mm -hmm. you words can probably just flow out from your mouth mm -hmm. without you thinking, probably maybe you need feedback from that person. The person might just sit and listen while you're talking. Mm -hmm. But when you're communicating, uh, you have to first think of what you want to speak you analyze it and then you also expect feedback from the person you're communicating to which is different from a way of just talking and you just let someone listen to what you're speaking to that person that's how i understand it thank you absolutely before i let you go before i let you go because you've given a very good distinction between talking and communicating do you think animals communicate with each other goats yes. cows Marine. Yes. Okay. Do yes, they, they, talk? they do. They talk. They do they talk to each other. Yes. Oh, they talk. Okay. What I can say is like uh, there is a sign they use for communicating. Uh 
Uh -huh. So that's the, okay, at the end of, they communicate because uh -huh. through those signs, they are able to get feedback and also react to the a sign which they have gotten from each other. Perfect. So I really believe that to communicate because without communication, they would really not be responding to each other. Uh-huh. And do they talk? Do animals, communication, we agree totally. So do animals talk to each other? In your opinion? Um, I'm really not so sure, but yes, since, yes. since the animals really uh, don't have words which flow out of them, so I have been uh -huh. thinking that, uh -huh. they, but, but also I think they talk because at the end of the day, there are sounds which they use. Uh -huh. So I have a feeling that they also talk through the sounds which they use to uh, reach each other in case there is a, a communication or information they want to convey to each other. Let's hear, let's hear what Ephraim on Giro has to say. Ephraim, uh, do you think uh, yes. do you think goats <laughs> talk to each other? You know, he said those well, goats are, 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 are talking to each other. I believe before I, I, I respond to that, Yes. Let me first uh, wave to the group and say welcome and uh, clear that to talk talking yes. is one of the methods of communicating. Aha. Uh -huh. Very interesting. A very interesting point. Talking is about opening your mouth mm -hmm. and releasing something, be it a sound, a word, or a gimmick, but it will send a signal to somebody whom you are communicating to. Aha. Uh -huh. But when I communicate, I does not need just to open my mouth and talk. I mm have -hmm. any other tool, instrument, or mechanism to pass my information to the intended person, object, or organism. Mm -hmm. So in animals, animals cannot come and talk. Animals can talk. only communicate. Mm -hmm. Animals don't talk, but animals just communicate. They communicate because they don't produce words that the other one can listen to. But the other one, the intended animal or organism will just receive what the animals are communicating to. Like this our dog. Yes. Yes. And yes. somebody told me that uh, there are some parrots that can tell you, come here, Ephraim. Is that parrot talking? Because they can do that. What the parrot is doing is not talking. Mm -hmm. What is the it parrot doing? Trained, the parrot has been trained mm -hmm. and confirmed into just doing that signal only. Uh -huh. And the person who interpret it is you to know that it is, it is communicating a sound to mean this one. But mm -hmm. they don't tell it to talk. Absolutely, absolutely. So I I I I I totally agree. I totally agree with everything. So there's a very big difference between communication and talking. Sometimes we talk thinking we are communicating, but we are not communicating. Okay? Um, and sometimes we communicate even without talking. Sometimes uh, for us trainers, um, you so, <laughs> that's why when, when we are talking, sometimes we have to be a little dramatic because we want to catch your attention for the next like 20 or so minutes. You have to be a little dramatic and you know, all those gestures and those kind of things because you don't want just to talk, you just want to communicate. Um, so it's animals don't talk. I totally agree with Ephraim. And even even when we think they are talking, they're just uh, you know, just uh, sounds uh, because uh, talking is uh, you know building sentences that actually make sense. Grammatical sentences for that matter, uh, animals do not have that, but they communicate and they're very, very good um, at, at communication. And therefore, do not uh, imagine that simply because you're talking, you are communicating, you may not. It's going to be a very interesting conversation with those who are doing uh, public speaking. Uh, because some people are just there, they are talking. 
provided they finish the speech, they, they're like, okay, fine. Uh -huh. I've maybe you have not uh, communicated. So there's a big, big difference between uh, talking and communicating. Great. So having said that, um, let's define what communication is. And we are saying that communication is the passing of information through the uh, from the mind of the sender uh, to a receiver through a channel with feedback, all right? So without all those components, we do not have uh, communication. So there is the, I'm trying to mute a few people here. So, so there is there is the passing of information from the mind of the sender to a receiver through a channel with feedback. Um, you know, uh, there's a way we used to define, uh, you know, back in uh, university during our undergraduate days, um, we used to define lecturing. I'm a teacher by profession. So we used to define lecturing, the lecture method of teaching as the process whereby notes move from the notebook of the lecturer to the notebook of the student without passing through the minds of either of them. Yeah, that's how we used to define <laughs> lecturing. So communication, you, you, you're creating an understanding between the sender and the receiver. So what does creating an understanding mean? It means, what was here now becomes what is in your head. So if I say one thing and then you get something different, then we haven't communicated, even if we have passed information. So it is not just a matter of passing information. If you think that communication takes different forms uh, in a different contexts. Now, this is really what communication is. It is uh, increasing this point of commonness. You see, can you see the green part? The green part is what the sender said, but was not received by the receiver. Let me tell you, in the, within the one hour that we are going to be with you, that, oh, you know, there are so many things I am going to say that will not get to you. And I, in fact, I saw somebody uh, complaining about my voice breaking, and, and therefore they didn't get some, a lot. They didn't get the context of the question I was asking. That is part of the green. You know the green, I have said so much, uh, the, but the receiver has not received. The yellow, there are things that you will imagine I have said, but I didn't say anything like that. Maybe because of what you are expecting me to say, you, you imagined I have said that, or you imagined I meant that. But I didn't mean that, because I am not talking to an empty slate. I am talking to a brain that already has that has already heard about communication. So there's already some beliefs about communication. So you 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 incorporate whatever you've heard and what you're hearing today. So you create your own version of the lesson. So so the yellow part is what you think I have said, but I didn't say it. Now you see the white bit. The white bit is the point of commonness. It is what I said and what was received as I intended uh, for it to be received. So our job as communicators is to increase this point of commonness between the sender and the receiver, reducing the green bit and reducing the yellow part. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what communication um, is all about. And we need to look at communication from that perspective, okay? So communication is very, very important. It helps us 
a managed conflict, and I don't want to go deeper into all this. Um, it helps us to manage conflict with. <laughs> do, you, do you even know how many conflicts we get ourselves into simply because there was a breakdown in communication? A certain man left the wife and went uh, for went to a party somewhere with the wife's blessing. Ah, you go have fun. And then when uh, he got there, he sent a text message to the wife. But uh, there was a typo to the message, and he wrote, "I I I wish." You uh -huh. forgot to add the E at the end. And uh, it was very, very hard for him to convince the lady that it was a typo. Okay? Breakdown in communication. Uh, you know, I'm a teacher of uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a teacher of English and literature, and and one of the things that uh, I used to teach is uh, the importance of uh, the importance of uh, punctuation marks. So at one point, I was working for an NGO, and we were trying to reduce instances of rape. So we had T-shirts written, stop. Now, okay, a very good message. But then, and we would give them to high school uh, students, but you would see some students uh, taking a pen and putting a full stop there. It means something that is completely different, okay? And something that could cause conflict. And then this is the, in the written format. But even as we speak, uh, there are so many conflicts that are brought about, even at the place of work, they are brought about by poor communication or communication breakdown. If you're very good at communication, then you're going to manage conflict. We are also able to build an effective team, okay? Um, when, when we're talking about leadership, we're going to be talking about something called uh, building high-performing teams, okay? Building high-performing teams. And the primary skill that you will need to build a high-performing team is powerful communication, charging the team for great performance. How well are you able to communicate and communicate powerfully so that the team understands exactly what you want them to understand. It also builds and maintains relationships. Today, businesses, families, institutions, careers, they are all maintained by relationships. If you're able to maintain and build the relationships through communication, then there is no telling in terms of you know, how you able to, uh, you move up in your career. Now imagine, uh, let, let me give an example. One day I, I am you know, traveling from uh, Nairobi, Kenya to a place called Dadab Refugee Camp. It's like a one hour uh, by air. So uh, it was immediately after I finished uh, high school. Now, we were going by a UN flight. Uh, it was a one hour journey. So I, I, when I got into the uh, aircraft, I sat next to one of those guys who, a very senior person, the country director of one of the major NGOs. Okay, and, and I was very young in my career those days. But then I sat next to him and I told myself, 
I have one hour to make a lasting impression on this guy so that the day I will want something from him, okay, he will remember me by name. I remember sometimes back I had him speaking and I, I realized he was very passionate about providing water to the pastoralist communities. And therefore I created a conversation around that. And whenever I started talking, when I started talking about issues to do with water and all those kind of things, I, I could see his face shining, you know, his eyes widening. Yeah. Because I'm talking about something that he is passionate about. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to be, uh, I think, I don't know which team I will be training, uh, the art of networking. Um, we, we are going to be talking about such, you know, those things more deeply. But if you're a very good communicator, then you can build and maintain powerful relationships. And I remember by the time we were getting to the other side, we had already become friends and that friendship you know, um, was very, very helpful to me. Yeah, sometimes later, a few years later in my career, very, very uh, important. Facilitates innovation. Without communication, there cannot be any innovation. Innovation happens when people have the capability and have the freedom to communicate freely. If you're able to communicate freely, especially if you're able to communicate with your bosses freely, then you will be able to, uh, 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 to spearhead uh, innovation. Very, very important. Managing employees, for those who have teams under you, you know. For us, uh, for us who are managing employees, we know the value of uh, communication. Okay, Communication is critical. All right. Without communication, you will have a chaotic organization. Contributes to growth of the company, and I think I don't want to go very deep uh, on that. Uh, contributes to the growth of the company, ensures transparency. Again, with good communication, um, there is transparency. So what are the elements of communication? Um, I think this is something that we have said. There is the source or the sender, that's the person initiating the message. Then there is the message itself, that is the content. Uh, there is a channel, means through which the message is passed, okay? There is the receiver, the person to whom the message is passed, and there is a feedback or the response um, of the receiver, uh, of, of, of the receiver to the message. Now, the, the one thing I would really want you to be keen on is the barriers. Now, sometimes, why do you communicate and then people understand their own things? Okay? <laughs> you know, the other day, um, one of my team members came and told me, depends on me, I don't know what to do. I asked her why. I go to the WhatsApp group, I put the link to the class. Then somebody, one of the students says, thank you for the link. Then someone down there says, where is the link? It's almost class time. <laughs> so she was so frustrated. Was, what do I do? <laughs> I don't have. People, you might realize that this person has just come from work and, and is rushing home and you know all that kind of thing. So they don't even have time to, to look a little bit up in the group. So just post it again, yeah? The, if they ask where the, the link is, and it is just a few steps up, just post it again. Because they, they, they maybe they had a very difficult day, okay? They are rushing home. Maybe they're even joining the class in, uh, in, uh, in public transport. So, so there's so many things that can hinder effective Communication. Now, as leaders, we need to be aware of these barriers so that we are not held hostage by the barriers. Okay. We are not held hostage, but we navigate 
around the barriers in order for us to uh, deliver the message. So there are some barriers that relate to the sender or the receiver. They are people-oriented barriers. For example, the background of both of them, it can be a barrier. Personality, age differences, feelings, okay? You might find you're speaking to somebody when your feelings are all over the place. Language barrier, attitude, education, rumors. You know, if there's a, there's a rumor in the, in the company, there's a rumor in the company, and the rumor is saying that you're just about to get to be sacked. You're just about to be sacked. And then your boss calls you to the office. It doesn't matter what the boss will tell you. You will keep waiting. Uh -huh. So, uh, is he saying, you know, the good? Is he, am I getting the letter immediately after this? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, yeah. Even if he says good things, you keep asking, "Am I being fattened for a kill?" Because it's a rumor. It becomes a barrier. So when there's a rumor, even if somebody gives you good information, you you don't get it. Poor planning, sabotage. Ignorance, environment, hatred, different status, class differences, and prejudice. All these are barriers to effective communication. Okay. And we should be aware of them. Now, there are other barriers that relate to misunderstanding of the message. They don't relate to the sender and the receiver, they are now related to misunderstanding of the message and they include things like poor listening or receiving using the wrong media you could be using the wrong media misinterpretations of the message choosing the wrong audience okay usage of didactic format instead of participatory kind of com uh, communication if for example i came in here and i was just speaking to myself probably some of you would have left a long time ago but because we are talking because we are engaging then uh, we are able to, to communicate. Wrong assumptions, okay? Different perceptions, lack of interest, poor organization, cultural differences. Again, very, very important. Um, you need to be very careful with, 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 with the cultural differences. Uh, one of the biggest challenges uh, we, we, we really had to inculcate in our facilitators uh, we had to tell them, guys, you need to know you're speaking to people from very different cultures. We ha we we've had participants from more than 20 countries in Africa, very, very different cultures. You, you be careful the examples you give. <laughs> yeah, be careful the illustrations you give. Because we, we, are, we are very, very diverse. Uh, so cultural differences, distortion of the communication, personal interest, economic differences, competition, and all those kind of things. So as the communicator, you must be aware of these barriers and ask yourself, which of these barriers is most likely to affect my message? And how do I navigate around it? How do I... How do I become proactive in ensuring that uh, my message uh, is not hindered uh, by any of these barriers? Finally, I want to share a few points that we will need to remember. So uh, give me just one minute. I ask for like, uh, a few minutes from the, the class I am joining. Uh, just one minute. Because I wouldn't want to not talk about these points. Esther, talk to me. Um, good evening, sir. I good evening. have a question regarding a, a point under sender and re receiver mm -hmm. regarding uh, education. Mm -hmm. How does education uh, 
become a barrier to effective communication? The level of education. You see, um, um, okay. Yes, you see, there's a. I, I used to have a. I used to have a. A professor, back in uh, undergraduate, he, I, he was teaching me when I was in the uh, first year. He was teaching me literature, and you could not understand anything in his class if you didn't have a dictionary. So he used to go <laughs> to class with the Oxford Learners Dictionary. Because he used to use some very hard words. I, I think he was, uh, I think he was insecure or something like that. So, so, so the, the level of education sometimes uh, might be a barrier because maybe you might have some assumptions that this person already knows. What, that's one of the things that is a big danger especially to us uh, who are trainers, mm. because you don't want to make any assumptions whatsoever. You don't want to make any assumptions. So with, with, with a very high level of education, maybe you assume other people know things. Um, we, we shouldn't make those assumptions. Great. Yes, oh, okay. thank you. Yes, uh, Yusuf Hussein. Yeah, my how can we get a soft copy of uh, these classes, these lessons? Oh, you will get all of them. You will get all of them. Um, if you're not on the e-learning platform, please let me know. I will share my number, my phone number, because we have an e-learning platform where all these, you know, like this class, we are recording it. Uh, it's also this uh, PowerPoint presentation. All of them are going to be there. If you're not on the e-learning platform, please text me on WhatsApp. Uh, by 11 a.m. tomorrow, you will be on that platform. Great, so give me, give me five minutes. Give me five minutes uh, to talk about some of the uh, points. Give us your number, yes. give us your number Malim, please. Give yes. us your number. I will, I will, I will. In a minute, let me first of all finish this. Let me first of all finish this. Okay. Yes. Uh, some very, very important points to remember when it comes to communication. One, learn to listen. You cannot be a great communicator if you are not a great listener. How would you communicate if you don't listen? Okay? And you see, there's a big difference between listening and hearing. Hearing is simply sound waves hitting your eardrum. As simple as that. Hearing is a physiological process. But listening is psychological. Listening, you choose what to listen to. Listening takes effort. All right? You decide. I'm going to listen to this and I'm not going to listen to this other one. So listening is very, very important, but also if you want to improve your communication, if you want to improve your communication, you must also show the other person that you're listening. You know, listening is not enough. Showing the other person that you are listening contributes in a big way to encouraging them to continue talking. So there is no way I can come to your office and I'm speaking to you and, and you're working on your laptop. And then you tell me, ah, go on, you see, go on, I'm, I'm hearing, go on. No, you're not, you're not. You're working on your laptop. You're not listening to me. For the two minutes that I'm in your office, look at me in the eye, okay? Give me visual cues, visual and verbal cues. You know, uh, visual cues, something like, you know, doing like this, eye contact, okay? Uh, and, and those kind of things. Verbal cues, things like, eh, hey, okay. And then what happened after that? All right. Oh, that is important. You know, you, you're encouraging me to keep talking. 
learn to be an effective listener. Very, very important. Number two, if you want to be a great communicator, be aware of people's emotions. And I know yesterday we talked about emotional intelligence and we said that when it comes to emotional intelligence, um, it assists in a big way in communication. You will look at someone and you see the state of, the emotional state that they are in, this is not the right time to communicate this message. I think it can wait. I think it can wait. Okay? Be aware of people's emotions. Empathize. You cannot be a great communicator without empathy. Okay? And, and, and we know there is a big difference between empathy and sympathy. Empathy is where you, you see things from the other person's perspective. Okay, so you're saying that when communicating with others, try not to be judgmental or biased by preconceived ideas or beliefs. Instead, view situations and responses from the other person's perspective. So empathize, very, very important in communication. Encourage, you know, when you're always negative, nobody will want to open up to you. When you don't see anything positive in other people, or when your words are always negative and demeaning, you kill communication. But when you encourage, when you are positive, when people feel energized after coming to your office, you know there are, there are, there are people who get into your office, into their office, you spend two three minutes. By the time you're leaving, you're saying, bring it on, bring it on. You feel energized. So if you're that kind of a person, then you're on your way to becoming a great communicator. And as a leader, as a leader, as a leader, mind the say, do gap. There must be a straight line between what you say and what you do. In fact, I think last week we said, there must be a straight line between what you think, what you say, and what you do. Because if you say one thing, but you do something else, whatever you're doing is communicating louder than what you're saying. Make the complex simple. If you cannot simplify a topic when you're talking to people about it, that means you have not understood it. If you use jargon, if you use jargon, that means you have not understood the concept. Make the complex simple. Find your own voice. Who are you? Don't, don't copy <laughs> Barack Obama or Martin Luther King or whoever, whenever you're communicating, be yourself. Everyone else is taken. The only person is, who is remaining is you. So be yourself. You want to be Barack Obama. Barack Obama, that personality is already taken. So be you. Be visible. Again, very, very important. As a leader, you must connect with people. You must, you know, people must feel your presence and listen with your eyes as well as your ears. Now, I want to stop there, ladies and gentlemen, and say that the topic on uh, communicating powerfully is wide and, and you need to continue searching more on what would make you a great communicator. What skills will you need so that when exceptional communicators are turned to stand, you're one of them. Whatever your area of expertise, whatever your profession is, 
become a great communicator.